Welcome, and thank you for joining us today as we explore renewable energy developments on agricultural land. Before we get started, I would like to gratefully acknowledge the traditional lands and territories of the Indigenous peoples who have lived on these lands and taken care of them since time immemorial. We are speaking to you from Treaty 6, Treaty 6 territory, as well as the historical regional homeland of the Métis, which includes the North Saskatchewan River Territory, the Le Lesser Slave Lake Territory, and the Lower Athabasca Territory. We acknowledge these jo those joining us from other areas of the province in Treaty 7 and 8 territories, and, re and we, re we unite with you in, res in respecting the histories, languages, and diverse cultures of the First Nations, Métis and Inuit, and are grateful for their contributions that continue to enrich our communities. So for today, uh, today's webinar, we'll be providing you information about the agriculture first approach. We will start with the background and on the generation approvals pause, or as the, uh, the moratorium as it was commonly known as on the renewable energies approach. Um, next, we will review the government direction following the pause. Then we will discuss prioritizing agriculture for renewable energy developments on agricultural land. These elements include class one and two lands according to the land suitability rating system or LSRS and what coexistence is, where it is required and what it, where it is recommended. Then we'll talk about the approach for private native grasslands, where irrigability assessments are needed and what is meant by other productive agricultural lands. So for the generation approvals pause, uh, municipalities, landowners, and the public raised concerns about the rapid growth of the renewable projects because of the loss of high quality agricultural land, reclamation security, and protecting world-class viewscapes. Announced on August 3rd, 2023, the government of Alberta directed the Alberta Utilities Commission to pause approvals on new renewable power projects for six months. The AUC, the Alberta Utilities Commission is an independent quasi-judicial agency responsible for the approval of Alberta's electricity generation projects. The purpose of this pause was to allow for the AUC to conduct an inquiry and recommend how to balance the development of renewables and a variety of issues raised by Albertans, by the AUC, and by the renewable energy developers. The pause ended on February 29th, 2024. The inquiry had two modules, or has two modules. The module A focused on the land use considerations that are identified here on this slide, and module B focused on the electrical grid reliability and connectivity. Module B is out of scope for this discussion, as are the elements of module A that are not part of the agriculture first approach. So on February 28th, 2024, the government announced new policy measures which would be put in place for renewable power plants following the end of the pause and completion of Module A. For the sake of completeness, this outlines the policy details that were announced on February 28th. Uh, the agricultural and environmental land restrictions called the Agriculture First Approach. This is led by Alberta Agriculture and Irrigation with support from the Ministries of Affordability and Utilities and Environment and Protected Areas. It's expected to be completed by the end of 2024. And the next sl slides will speak to the specifics of this approach. The le reclamation security requirements is led by Environment Protected Areas. This is also expected to be completed by the end of 2024. Protection for pristine viewscapes is led by Environment and Protected Areas as well and expected to be completed by the end of 2024. Both affordability and utilities, as well as tourism and sport, are assisting. And finally, the policy amendments for renewable developments on Crown land. The uh, Alberta Forestry and Parks is leading this work and is expected to be completed by the end of 2025. <clears throat> the focus of this engagement today uh, is going and for the next few weeks is on the agriculture first approach to renewable developments on private land. And the statements in this slide are from that announcement. This agriculture first approach was approved by cabinet following the concerns expressed by the public, municipalities and landowners. And these concerns were documented during the approvals pause and formed the basis for the recommendations of the AUC's consultant reports and subsequent recommendations to the government. 
So let's go into details of what this approach is and what we need from you. Land suitability rating system, class one and two. The agriculture first approach requires that lands rated as LSRS class one or two must remain in agricultural production. So this means class one and two lands must be avoided or the renewable energy proponent must ensure coexistence with agricultural production. And the term agrivoltaics is being used to describe this coexistence. There are multiple jurisdictions that are working on ways to ensure this coexistence. So these photos in the, in the slide are from Europe, not Alberta. We have limited examples of coexistence or agrivoltaics beyond sheep grazing. In other parts of the world, it has been proven there are ways to ensure the two uses can coexist on the same land base and Alberta must do the same. So what does coexistence mean? The agri excuse me. The Agriculture Land Evaluation Report for Energy Projects by the Tanis Conservation Services, commissioned by the AUC, recommends lands with high value to agriculture, in our case we're talking about LSRS Class 1 and 2, should maintain a minimum of 80% of pre-installation production of annual crop or forage production. So some questions to consider are, what should the minimum production be based on? How will it be measured? and who will collect and assess the information? What happens if this production level is not met? Alberta's government will establish the tools necessary to ensure other agricultural lands will continue to be available for agricultural production. So coexistence will be recommended for other agricultural lands as a best management practice. So native grasslands in Alberta support habitat for more than 80% of the province's species at risk, listed under the Federal Species at Risk Act and Provincial Wildlife Act. In alignment with existing wildlife directives for solar and wind project energy projects under the authority of the Wildlife Act and the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act, the Agriculture First Report approach recommends avoidance of native grasslands to protect wildlife and wildlife habitat from the potential impacts of the development of renewable energy projects and their operation. The definition for grasslands, for native grasslands, is taken from the Alberta Public Lands Glossary of Terms, and for grasslands to be defined as native, they must be comprised of greater than 30% foliar cover of native grassland species. So when citing for a proposed renewable energy development, we are suggesting that if a quarter section has 30% or greater area covered by a native grassland, then that quarter section should be removed from a proposed siting. And of course, the online questionnaire provides space for input, which we are we welcome from you. Recall earlier from the Government of Alberta stated it will establish the tools necessary to ensure Alberta's irrigable lands continue to be available for agricultural production. The proposed approach is lands currently under irrigation will be avoided and other lands may require an irrigability assessment, which will form the AUC's decision regarding a renewable energy development project. The questionnaire provides you with an opportunity to provide input on what lands should require an irrigability assessment. And there are five different levels of assessment used for a variety of situations to assess the suitability of land for irrigation. They range from a detailed level one assessment that requires 10 or more soil cores per quarter section down to a level five assessment, which is a simple desktop, desktop assessment with no soil cores. The assessment will determine the irrigable land classification, and this classification is what the AUC will use to inform its decision regarding renewable energy projects. Productive agricultural lands. All agricultural lands are productive to varying degrees and for various purposes. The land suitability rating system has seven classes. We are recommending that if the most productive lands in a municipality are, in, are LSRS class three, so in other words, there is no class one or two in the municipality, so that if there is class three, these lands should be treated the same as LSRS class two lands which means that these lands must be kept in agricultural production by either avoiding development or requiring coexistence. The classes of land will be scored or ranked 
based on the potential productivity, and that information will be used by the AUC to inform its decision regarding renewable energy proposals. So the GIG questionnaire that I keep mentioning, the online questionnaire provides you with an opportunity to take this information and provide your feedback. The link for the Agriculture First questionnaire will be sent to you in an email. Or it may well bear, if you're watching this recording, you will have found the, the link uh, alongside the recording. This engagement is focused on agricultural landowners, including Indigenous landowners, municipal representatives, irrigation district representatives, and renewable energy companies. They would also be included in the uh, municipal, municipal and community representatives include special areas and Métis settlements. The intent is to gather feedback and input to help re refine the policy to support the agriculture first approach that was announced. These criteria will be used to assess the suitability of agricultural land for future renewable energy development and to ensure that agricultural land remains available for agriculture production now and into the future. So the questionnaire will be open from July 24th and will close August 14th. This is a narrow window, so please share this widely with your members. We will use your input to refine the policy that guides future renewable energy developments on agricultural lands, and this will be brought forward to Cabinet for final approval before the end of 2024. I thank you very much for your attention and interest in helping us complete this Agriculture First approach. If you have questions or comments, please send them to the uh, email listed on the slide, which is agi.agriculturefirst at gov.ab.ca. Thank you. I look forward to hearing your responses.